Nice hair. So you don't already really love your hair. Yeah, I need right. to fix it. First question. Where did the hair come from? Um, Here we go. Well, I've, <laughs> I've been a mermaid in another life and it's just, you know, me embodying my past life persona. No. Um, I just love colourful hair. It's yeah. fun and it's crazy and it eats all my money up. Um, but my hairdresser is, it's, it's is expensive, my... expensive, isn't it? Yeah, it's very expensive. Mm. But my hairdresser is my best friend and I spend like two days a month with him making sure it's fine. So... Was it your suggestion or his to, to mix it up? Um, it was mine. I yeah. came to him, my hair was already purple when I went to him. Yeah. Um, because before, uh, just a friend of mine was doing it. Um, so yeah, the, but then I went to YM Salon in Paddington in Sydney and they were like, we want to work with you. And he's just been super creative with it and we've done so much stuff with it and put lots of crazy fake extensions in and, you know, changed the colour up. Like right now I've got about four Ooh. different colours in it. So, yeah, it's fun. There you go, I like I it. it. You should do it. What colour should I get? Well, do matching. Matching? <laughs> what do you guys reckon? Could I pull it off? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, maybe, maybe not yet. Maybe in the next interview. What do you All reckon? Right, then that's we'll, fine. I'll come prepared. We'll do an interview. Tiger Lily bleaches your hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best idea. Alright. Type yes. <laughs> can I test it out with this new app? Yes. Maybe I can yes. do that. Oh my gosh, we need to talk about my app, it's right. so exciting. So, have you guys heard of the app? Give us a lowdown. What's this new app? How All does right, it work? so my new app is called Tiger Lily, and um, you can buy it, or oh no, it's actually free to download on the iTunes App Store, so if you just type in Tiger Lily, it comes up, and it's usually like the first one. Um, so pretty much it's a photo editing app, so you can take photos of anything and add glitter and rainbows and unicorns and mermaid tails and ice cream and... We have like little jalapenos with flames coming out of their Ooh. mouth and kittens floating on bacon. Floating it's really fun. Actually, I'll, can I show them? Yeah. We can check it to the screen so you guys will be able to see it. So, this is what it looks like. That's like the home page. So that's what you should pretty much be looking for. And I'm sure if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen like, you know, all my ridiculous photos and selfies of me putting cats yeah. on my head and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. fun. Get it. <laughs> and then you can try out the new hairstyles. Then you, yes, know, you can have exactly. a floating Actually, bacon next to you. There is a blue hairstyle on there and there's some um some troll doll hairstyles too with like, you know, do you remember the troll dolls? With like pink I do remember and them. blue and green quiffs. So yeah, that's fun. That's it. Your All solution. Right. <laughs> Are we going to do it here in America? Did you get to mix up any hair? What are the hairstyles there like? I was disappointed with American hairstyles. I only saw like four girls with colourful hair like mine in the whole month that I was there. But um, my one of my really good friends I was travelling with um, in LA, he was like, I'm going to go get my hair cut. So we went to a salon and he shaved his whole head and just left like a fringe. So that was a, that was a hair experience yeah. in America. But apart from that, I just kept it the same. Do the styles come down from America or do they go up to America? I spoke to my hairdresser about this. Apparently, Australian and British hairdressers are a bit more forward-thinking. Yeah. But then again, like America's like on the top of everything, so I don't I don't know why they wouldn't be doing. Cool I mean, it makes shit. sense. Maybe it's just the color that they're not really into. Yeah. I think it's the natural look is in at the moment, which I obviously love to go for. Yeah. And tell <laughs> us about this American trip then. Um, so it was amazing. I took a month off DJing pretty much and just took a holiday and then also did like um, heaps of meetings and interviews and some radio work and a photo shoot um, and explored some other creative avenues that I've been thinking about getting into recently. Yeah. So it was amazing. It was really nice to have some time off and to to be behind the crowd, you know, as opposed to, no, yeah. to be in the crowd as opposed to being in front of the crowd. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, it was beautiful. I had such a good time and I've come back really excited to to work and to get back into like my music again which is great and you know from all the meetings and the radio stuff that I did over there it's opened up a, you know a world of opportunities so I will be back very soon <laughs> is the weather nicer up there than it is here or at the moment we've been it's like winter over there oh, that's, right. that's true is it snow in New York it was snowing seriously I got there and it was like a blizzard hit there was like this much snow on the ground like every day Jeez. but um it was pretty nice in like Miami and yeah. LA. San Fran was pretty cold. Vegas was cold at night. Um, Vegas, yeah, Vegas though, wouldn't it be boiling during, during the day? During the day it was, it was, you know, jeans and t-shirt weather. weather. Yeah, so it wasn't cold. Yeah. Hmm.
That's nice. Mm. Well, tell us about the video as well, because I saw on your Facebook page you had us yeah. a photo of getting um, ready for this video. Yeah, so I'm actually not in the video. Mm. Um, it's more of like a an artsy creative video. So it's for my new track, Faith, with Two Less and Cash. Um, so we've got an LA director and a cinematographer working on it, um, and it was shot when I was over in LA, which yeah. is really exciting. Um, I can't tell you much more because it's coming out in like two or three weeks time. Yeah. So. Um, That's alright. But it was really nice to have you know a massive part in the in the process and to be able to just be like, no, I want this to happen. I want this to happen, and I feel like it really reflects the song, which yeah. is. Yeah, which is important. It's it's different. It's quite emotional and like, yeah, I suppose it's quite creative. So yeah. I mean, I'm excited. I hope you guys will like it when you see it. Mm. And you got any more tracks? Yeah, hashtag faith. Hashtag faith. That's it, guys. Hashtag faith. <laughs> Can you guys see us, by the way? Hopefully, we're not too pixelated. But if you can't see us perfectly right now, it's going to be recorded completely. So it's going to be in high definition. We're going to have clips. We're going to have everything. So you'll be able to see us again later on Facebook and whatnot. So that's perfect. Um, any more upcoming tracks in the near future? Any yeah, um, I've got a couple more collabs coming out and then some more originals which will hopefully be released, you know, mid-year mm -hmm. and then working on my EP as well which will hopefully be out at the end of the year. Ooh. So that'll all be released probably on One Love, um, so that's like my kind of yeah, my Australian yeah. record label. So it's really exciting um, and I did some work over in America as well on some cool music and I'm working with a couple of different people from all over the world which mm -hmm. is... It's great, you know, you get new influences and stuff like that. So yeah. there's lots coming this year, which is really exciting. Mm, there you go. And ooh, we had a question here. What was it like with Tiesto reposting your picture? Oh my gosh. What was, the, what was that like? <laughs> it was so funny um, because, I, yeah, I didn't ask him to repost it or anything like that. And um, I just, I showed him the photo because obviously he gave me my headphones. It was for my, um, for my 21st birthday present. Um, and so, you know, I wear them to yeah. all my gigs, and it was, it was a cool photo, it was a good shot. Um, it was taken by um, a guy who works for 1337 Photography in Sydney. Um, and yeah, I sent it to him, and then about half an hour later, like, my phone started just blowing up. It was Jeez. just ridiculous. And in the space of 24 hours, I think I got 10,000 Instagram followers, 10,000 6, Facebook followers, a oh. couple of thousand Twitter followers, and I just sent him a message being like, you are awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> but it's great because my audience has expanded so much and you know, I've got so much more new love and yeah. it's made it a little bit more global, which is so difficult to do. It's so hard to, you know, reach new people and like get them to like like what you do. So yeah. I'm really excited. I just want to meet everyone that's just been following me. I, well, I think we saw you got over 50,000 people on Instagram now. That's yeah, huge. it's crazy. Well, I do love a selfie. Yeah, Cheeky. sneaky selfies. And now you'll be able to take them with the app as well. Now you'll have exactly. even cooler looking selfies. That's why I like designed the app, because I was like, I need something to make it more fun. Yeah. Because, you know, you have ones like Cat Wang and the Major yeah, Laser yeah. one, and I think Snoop Dogg has one, Steve Aoki has one, mm. but, um, yeah, I wanted my own, so yeah. it's really exciting. That's pretty fun. How did you get in touch with Tiesto at the start? Was it sort of just down the road, you're like, hey, Tiesto, what um, was it like? We met at... <laughs> Stereo Sonic two years ago at Brisbane Stereo Sonic, we were all just partying together. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know, I, I'd never met him before. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even really know like much, much about, about him. him. Yeah. And then we just, you know, became really good friends. We got on like that over, you know, a couple of Jaeger bombs. And yeah, the rest is history. We've just stayed in touch the whole time. So it's been, yeah, it's been great. He's very supportive of what I do, which is really awesome. And you supported his Asia tour, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Um, yeah, it was incredible. The shows were ridiculous. So we performed in Korea, Manila, Kuala Lumpur, Jakarta. And the last show in KL was the biggest. So it was like 30,000 um, 30, people, which was just, you know, yeah. so many. It was it was amazing. And I performed with him and Danny Avila, who's a, a young gun from Spain. Mm -hmm. So it was, very, it was very inspiring to share the stage with, you know, such legendary acts. I want to do it again. Yeah? Is there any upcoming tours or shows that we should keep an eye on? Yeah, well, I've got months? a big Australian one coming up at the moment for something that I can't announce yet, but it will be happening soon. And then there's there's definitely talks um, about doing more stuff over in Asia and America and, you know, maybe Europe. So 
we'll just see how it goes. I've just got to tackle like this big Australian one first, yeah. and then plenty of room later in the year to do more traveling, which I'm really excited about. Like Asia was amazing, you know, it was just crazy. Yeah. Do you like traveling? Are you are you into sort of going from state to state to state to state? Yeah, I or... love it. I love it. Like last night I was in Cos Harbour. Today I'm in Melbourne. Tomorrow I'm in Sydney. So yeah, yeah it's good. It's really fun. And how did you Keep start? Balls. Yeah. Well, when you started, were your parents sort of like that? How did it start? So what was the reaction from everyone? Well, when you first got into it all. They just thought that I wanted to get drunk all the time and like, and just party, yeah. you know? And I was just like, well, no, that's not how it is. Yeah. I actually really like it. I suppose it was more about partying then, yeah. but um, now they're all really supportive. So yeah. it's great. I think they can see how much I love it and, you know, that it's going really well yeah. and I've got lots of supporters and friends um, that come and watch me play. So yeah, everyone's really positive about it now, which is a nice change because at the start everyone was a bit skeptical about. It is hard, isn't it? it yeah. Is. Well, you know, you, you're performing in a club where there's heaps of like alcohol and everyone's partying and yep. late nights and you know, McDonald's and pizza on the way home yep. from your gig. So it's not exactly the healthiest lifestyle, but you know, I make it work, and I think. Yeah, mum and dad can see that now, so they're proud. Yep. Mum likes to follow me on Facebook and like everything and shares the people, like my links that I post to her friends at work. It's, it's cute. Yep. Love you, mum. <laughs> <laughs> and what age did you get into it? Was it really um, young? Well, I'm 21 now um, and I started, I only started when I was, I touched my first set of decks when I was 18 um, and then I started playing when I was 19. Um, so I had, you know, maybe six months practicing my bedroom, you know, figuring out what did what, like, what button did what and, you know, how it all worked and my partner at the time was actually a DJ so that was great to like, you know, have someone who could teach me yeah, the knowledge. The ropes. Um, yeah. And then I did actually a competition called Your Shot which is like this really amazing, you should all follow Your Shot actually if you're interested in getting into DJing. Um, it's a competition where they select people from all around Australia in different states and give them six weeks of free DJ lessons. That's right. So you can have no experience, you can have a tiny bit of experience, um, or you know, more experience, yeah. and then at the end of that you all battle out in like a big DJ battle and yeah, they choose a winner. So I ended up coming second in that. That's fantastic. So that was in Sydney in 2000 and... Hmm. <laughs> 2011 or 2012? What year is it now? I think it must have been 2011. I've been DJing for two and a half years now. Yeah, so 2011? Yeah, I think yeah. it was 2011. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then, you know, I met my manager through that competition and it opened up so many doors and, you know, at the, f at the start it was really slow and I was like, oh, I've just, you know, done well in this comp, yep. it's going to be amazing, I'm going to get gigs out of my ears and I didn't, yep. but then, you know, you have to be patient. I think that's the thing with this whole process, you know, you have to keep at it. Mm. You have to love what you do and just be patient because it will come eventually, but, yeah. And that's paid off, obviously. I mean, yeah, now look at you. Yeah, yeah. Flying in and out. Yeah, it's, it's crazy now, which is great. I'm so happy with it. It's, yeah, I'm very blessed. And when can the guys see you in the next couple of weeks? Are there... Um, well, I'm only playing in Australia in the next couple of weeks. Actually, I'm in New Zealand, I think, next month. Oh. So if you're from New Zealand, that's great. Um, but yeah, I've got heaps of shows in Sydney. I'm at Pasha City um, tomorrow night, which is like my, my big residency in Australia. So it's like the same as Pasha, New York and Ibiza um, with lots of aerial dances and yep. fire eaters and all this stuff. Um, and then, you know, playing in Melbourne heaps and Brisbane, Darwin, Adelaide, maybe Perth, Tasmania. I'm playing down at Breath of Life Festival, which is really cool. Um, yeah, there's heaps of stuff going on at the moment. All my tour dates are on my Facebook page, so if you're interested, that's where to find them. Yep. Mm. Okay, and we'll put that link up really soon as well. Um, also, ooh, will the app be on Android? Yes, it's on Android. Oh, it is on Android. It's already on Android and on, um, what's the other iPhone. one? iPhone. Yeah. Is iPhone the name for it? iPhone, Apple? Apple. App Store? App Store, I don't know. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's on both. Well, it should be anyway. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, Faith. Yes. How, what's happening with that? How, how did Hashtag that come? Faith. Hashtag Faith. Um, it's been amazing. Um, yeah, the duo that I've been working with, Two Less, hit me up and we, you know, put this track together and it's just been a really positive experience. I've, I've, I've loved it, you know, and, you know, sending back and fro and, like, to and forth and getting new ideas and stuff and the melody I just love. I feel like it's just so powerful. Um, I hope you guys like it too. 
really catchy, I feel. And um, it took us a while to get it to a point where, you know, it was ready to be released. But yeah. um, now I'm, I'm so happy with it and I'm really, really excited. I think it has the potential to, you know, do pretty well. And I've been playing it at all my <laughs> sets and people don't know that it's my song. But, um, you know, they still put their hands up and dance. That's I've it. been taking some sneaky like video recordings, like being <laughs> like, haha, ha, you're dancing to my song and you don't even know it. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's great. Um, so it went on pre-order on iTunes yesterday. The links are all on my Facebook page. Yep. And then it comes out on Valentine's Day, which is nice. So it comes out on Valentine's Romantic. Day on iTunes and Beatport all at once. So yeah, it's really exciting. And some cool remixes too. How long did it take to make? Just from, or were you sort of on and off with it? Or? Yeah, it's an on and off. that was an on and off process because, you know, over Skype yeah. and over internet. When you're sitting in the studio, you can write a track in like a day. Yeah. If you've got the good vibes, exactly. obviously. But this took longer, like, you know, the whole process start to finish, including all the record label yeah. stuff, takes months, you know? Yeah. So, but you know, that's okay. It's part of like, yeah. part of the whole And when process. can we expect the next one? The next original? Um... In about a few months? Yeah, a few months. Yeah. Ma maximum. Yeah. Maximum. Yeah. That's it's great. Very exciting. That I sounds really late. good. I I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. Then Valentine's Day I'll have some music to play. Yeah, seriously. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? I don't have a Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm actually working on Valentine's Day. Yeah? Where am I playing? At Penrith. I'm playing at the Peachy in Penrith, um, which is out west of Sydney. So maybe I'll find a hot boy to pash. <laughs> 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 It's great. Okay. Um, now we've just got a couple more questions. Oh yeah, love for boy bands. Where did that come from? <clears throat> Mexican food, I think. Oh, and boy bands. Yes, yum. I'm so oh. hungry. Um, I've always just loved a, a bands of any type. Yeah. My dream was to always be in the Spice Girls or the Pussycat Dolls. Yeah. Or something like that. You yeah, know? yeah. And so boy bands is really. I just love it because they all do the dance moves like. Yeah. I can't even do them. Yeah. But um, there's a big music festival in Australia that most of you probably know of. It's called Future Music Festival. And three years ago, I actually missed out on that festival to go and see Backstreet Boys live, which is like a pretty big thing for me. <laughs> to miss out on a whole day of like, you know, partying to dance music to see Backstreet Boys, but it was totally worth it. It yeah. was amazing. They had all the dance moves and they sung all their old stuff. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> So I'm not in a boy band, but um, yeah, it's it's fun. I love it, and like I, I think because I always grew up with like the Spice Girls were like my main influence. Yeah. Back then, and like Bardo was another popular yeah. Australian one. So I think there's you know that like fairy tale music yeah, yeah. lifestyle associated with you know boy and girl groups. So yeah. yeah that's, I think, that where that comes from. And you got sort of an influence in your music as well? Does that sort of influence how um, you like to write your music or? It makes me want to write more poppy music, I think. Yeah. Which is good and bad. I think it's something that I'm going to explore more, like, in the future. So, you know, hopefully singing on my own tracks mm. and having, you know, really, really awesome radio edits that can be played on the radio, but then also in clubs. So I, I suppose, like, Zed is a great example. Like, he's smashed that. He's, yeah. you know, created this amazing fusion between radio, it's really both. And, yeah, it's radio like... and clubs. So I think to be able to do that would be great. Um, but yeah, it's just like pop music. I love it. Yeah. Don't get away from it. And I think the vocals mix really well. Like you look at Zed as well. His vocals, they're just killer, and they That's go. That's what you need. A f a r sorry, I almost <laughs> swore. Like, Can I swear? Yeah. It's casual. It's casual. <laughs> um, it's fine. Yeah, he's got like really solid vocals, so that totally makes it. Yeah. Mm. What are, are any vocals upcoming in, in your tracks? Well, I'm getting singing lessons. Whoa. Yeah. So. We'll see. Do you want to give us a preview now? No. <laughs> Not just yet. Very soon though. Very soon. Very soon. I actually have a, a song um, as a... I wrote this, um, like I suppose, a vocal bootleg yep. of Alive by Cruella and Clarity by Zed and kind yeah. of combined them. And I did that with one of my girlfriends called Pearl. Um, so we recorded it and uh, sitting on private on my SoundCloud. I haven't released it yet. Not I'm yet. a bit nervous. So I might put it up. We'll see. What will what'll convince you to put it up? What, what can these guys do to convince you to put it up? Oh, what, what can we get? I don't know. 
Can we see if we can get... One of you can sing me a love song on YouTube, then I might think about putting Ooh, it up. Love song on YouTube? Yeah. How about how many times... Write me a love song! I know! So... <laughs> <laughs> So apparently John Legend, his new track All of Me, which I did the, the bootleg with Dem Slackers, um, I did the bootleg of that track, apparently that song was written about his wife, which is so romantic. So if someone can write a really good love song, that'd be awesome. As long as my manager says yes, which I'm sure he will. Challenge. <laughs> Accept it if you will. <laughs> what, what have we got? They've got a week. Is that right? Until Valentine? Uh, it doesn't need to be before Valentine's Day. It doesn't need to be before Valentine's Day. No, just soon. whenever. Okay. Yeah. I like it. We'll see you. A couple of years. We'll see you a couple of years. I'm pretty sure it'll be done pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of creative minds out there. Mm. And what are some of the venues you played at recently? Where, where um, have people been able to see you recently? Well, I've taken obviously a month of playing um, yeah. in America, but yesterday I played in Coast Harbour at the Plantation Hotel, which was really fun. And then. The night before that, on Wednesday night, I played at The Wall, which is at the World Bar in King's Cross at Sydney, mm -hmm. and that's really cool. You get to play more like dirty, electro, grungy kind of yeah. vibes. So that was really fun. I always love playing there. It's a really good night. Um, and then I'm playing tonight two different shows in Melbourne at Soda Pop and Madhouse, and then at Pasha Sydney tomorrow night. Um, yeah. And then, you know, next week it's like Wollongong, a cruise in Sydney, and a couple of more Sydney shows, some out west and some in the city. Wow. And I think the next week might be Canberra. Yeah. So just um, at the moment, it's all over Australia. So. And what's the most you played in one night? <clears throat> the most gigs. Most gigs in one night. I think I did four once. That's a lot of driving, or. Yeah. Seriously. Of, that'd be all over the place. They were all like kind of in close-ish proximity. Yeah. Um. So that's okay. The guys down in Melbourne, though, they can do like five or six gigs in one night. Like. They're really bunched up as well. Lots of clubs here, whereas in Sydney, there's not as many clubs, and they're all a bit more, you know, spread. Yeah. So. It's a little bit more tricky to do more gigs than, you know, say two is kind of my limit. Like yeah. tonight, say, I've, I'll just do two yeah, and yeah. that's it. Um, but it also gets confusing after you play a set, you know, like you're like, hang on, have I already played that song? And yeah, with the new technology, your USB tells you what you've already played. But sometimes you're like, I swear I've heard this song in my set. But yeah. you know, it was it was an hour ago at the nightclub yeah, before, yeah. so it can be, yeah, a little bit confusing. But um, hmm. That's how it goes. Yeah, exactly. Alright, so we've got a couple of <coughs> questions here as well. Um, production and DJing tips. Um, practice. Seriously. For, in regards to production, choose one, like, software program and just try and nail it. Like, there's no point in, you know, getting a million plugins and yeah. trying to learn them all. Like, I mostly work with Massive and Silent and I think, like, for me, on Ableton, those two are, like, the most important. Yep. That's wrong. the wrong thing to say. Not most important, but you know, I'm just trying to yeah. master those two. I think a lot of people go into it being like, you know, I've got to learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G, plus like, you know, Ableton, Fruity Loops, Logic, everything. Yep. And just keep it simple. That's the best way to do it. And also, you know, find someone who you can work with that's really great at teaching you that can also enhance your ideas at the same time. Yep. So, you know, someone that you can be like, well, I want it to sound like this, um, but what I've done, it sounds like this. How, how do I make, it, do I make it sound yeah. the way I want it to? So, in production, like that's my main tip, and you know, it's just time. Um, DJing, get a basic setup. It's kind of the same thing. Keep it simple. Yeah. Get a basic setup and learn using CDs without, like, without the, you know, what's it called? The automatic <coughs> mix button. I just don't even use it. See, I don't even know what it's yeah, called. Yeah. The one that kind of um, mixes all the tracks yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. If you can get like a pair of like Pioneer CDJ thousands, because they don't even have like, they don't even have the, the, like all the details that the new two thousands have. So when you're learning on like the real basic stuff, it makes you listen, which is so important because you know sometimes you do need to listen yeah. because the technology won't be working or you know it's always good to As trust, we've seen tonight, trust your technology ear can yeah be. technology sucks <laughs> it's always good to trust your ear and to trust you know your gut feeling when it comes to music because a lot of people mix without even hearing it they go yeah. off if they're using um computer programs to mix they often go off you know the visual sound waves which mm. you know i don't think that's really fun so i'd say for DJing skills um learn on an old pair of cdjs and use cds because that's how you, you know. That's how you really get get better. Yeah, that's how you yeah. take a step forward. You don't want to start using the craziest, latest technology yeah. that mixes it all for you, because then you won't even know how to do it when you come to the old kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so that's it, guys. Keep it simple. Keep it simple and lots of practice. I spent hours in my bedroom when I first started DJing. Yeah.
trying to mix you and I and Medina into like, I don't know, something like, what's that, um, take over control. Yeah. And, you know, just some shit again and again and again. But I finally got that. You got it? Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. All right. We've got to bring on <laughs> Thomas here. We're going to bring on Thomas. Oh, exciting. Um, Thomas, jump on your, your screen. Hopefully, Thomas, I can't see you at the moment. Oh, there he hey. is. Hey! We'll jump, we'll put him on. So I think you had a question not too long ago about a, uh, catching you with Tiesto, I believe. Can we see him? Yeah, he'll jump on soon, I hope. Hopefully the technology hasn't even been in our favour a lot today, but we're getting there. Alright, Thomas, chuck on your webcam. We can't see you, all black. We don't want to colour here, but we don't have colour there. Oh, he's disconnected. No. Oh. We'll see if we can bring him back later on. Sorry, Thomas. It's alright, we'll come back to you, Tom. <coughs> <laughs> alright, he's struggling there, I think. Okay, another story. Biggest hangover in one night. Oh or worst God. hangover. Oh, there's too many. <laughs> Sometimes I get hangovers so badly that I actually feel like I can't breathe because I'm so hungover. It actually sucks. I think the worst hangovers though are when you don't sleep and you just party, 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 and then it hits you at about 6 p.m. and you just eat as much nachos as you can. Nachos McDonald's, nachos McDonald's. Yeah. And you feel like vomiting and it's worse. And you know, in all realistic nature, in the realistic nature of things, you should just like drink heaps of yep. water and have some bananas. I remember one time I was playing in Melbourne and I came back to Sydney with the worst hangover yeah. and I had a, a private boxing session with yeah. my mum booked and um, I was like, I can't do it, I can't do it, but I bailed on my mum for this boxing session for three days in a row and then I went and it was the most painful hour of my life but then I felt really good afterward. <laughs> so boxing and water. I think water would be one of the main ones, mm. yeah definitely. Also milk thistle tablets, I got them in the USA and they like help with your liver? Everyone's got like a little trick they've got for the hangovers, I've mm -hmm. decided. Everyone's got their own little thing. Like I've heard, I think Hydrolyte I think works. Hydrolyte's really good. And apparently there's a couple of other things yeah. as well. Alright, we've got Ryan here. We're going to bring Ryan on. <laughs> so if Ryan, if you can hear us, you're coming on. Bring you on screen. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, technology hasn't been in our favour. Help us out here, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, there we are. can see and hear you. There we go. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good. Good. Where are you from? Australia. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, down in Tasmania. <gasps> I'm coming there soon. I know. It's gonna be good. <laughs> so um, excited. Cool. What's up, Ryan? Uh, Give us a question. Uh, uh, what's your favorite movie? My favorite what? movie favorite movie see my problem favorite is movie. yeah I don't have much time to watch movies I find myself like not catching any of the like the latest flicks or anything like that which is really irresponsible yeah. of me but <laughs> if I had to choose one I reckon it would be Mean Girls <laughs> that's a classic I think I think that's been around for a lot that, that came out yeah. a while ago didn't it probably Mean Girls actually and then the other day I was in New York and it was like a blizzard outside and uh, <laughs> he's laughing at me. <laughs> um, yeah, in New York there was a blizzard outside, and so I watched Despicable Me, and that was the cutest movie ever. So that definitely has to be up there. I would love to watch it again. There you go. Despic What's your favorite? Yeah, your favorite movie. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have a favorite. It's not my favorite. We'll have, to, we'll have to recommend him some, I think. So we've got Mean Girls and Despicable Me on the list. Yeah, Mean Girls and Despicable Me. ka -ching. <laughs> All right, Ryan. We'll uh, catch you I soon. I have seen that. I have He's seen him. Uh, see I'll you see you Breath of Life. Yeah, I've seen him. Bye. Got a Breath of Life. I'll be there. Awesome. <laughs> All right, we've got one more. We're going to bring Thomas back on. Come on, Thomas. Hopefully you fixed it up. We're putting you back on screen. Fingers crossed. Alright, here we go, connecting. Do you think it'll work? What do you reckon? I don't know. Fingers do you want to cross. bet on it? Bet on it? Ten or dumplings? <gasps> it's working! I think you won. <laughs> Thomas, give us a question. 
We can't hear you. Oh. There we go. Hey, where are you from? Pardon? I'm from. From America. Awesome. Whereabouts? Uh, in Texas. Oh, nice. Um, when am I going to be back there next? Is that what you asked? Um, yes. I think I'm going to come over for EDC in Vegas. Um, I don't know whether I'll be playing or partying or networking or what I'll be doing yet, but I think that's the plan. But um, I'm actually just at my agent's office here in Melbourne, um, and we're talking about you know an American tour toward the end of this year. So hopefully, you know. I'll be I'll be back soon. I plan to be back and like, you know, yeah. after being in LA, I think I want to move to LA because there's like so much going on and so much awesome yummy food and <laughs> I yeah, I think it's really exciting all the opportunity that's over there. So I'll be back for sure. Thomas, what time is it there? Yeah, you what time like, is it? You, you look like you're staying up until four AM or something. Um, it's three o'clock in the morning. <gasps> wow. What? That's, that's dedication. <laughs> that's amazing. Thanks, man. Aww. Have you caught her before? Where, where did you Where did you find Tiger? Where did I find her? I think I found you from Tiesto, actually. Ah, because he, yeah, so after the Asia tour, there was some photos shared, and then he also shared my photo the other day, so I've got lots of new Tiesto followers, which is awesome. Thanks, Tice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no awesome. Thanks, heaps. All right. See you later, Thomas. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> That's really cool. On the other side of the world, 3 a.m. Amazing. Alright, I think we've got Jack here. We'll see what Jack's got. One second. Jack, are you there? You can't see your screen. Oh, he's Ooh. not in his seat. Alright. He's not there. We'll come back to Jack. Alright. Guys, if you do want to come on, jump on. We've still got a lot of positions on the camera here. We don't have too long left, but you'll be able to jump on and have a look. Now what we want to do is we want to ask you a question. First thing that comes to mind, or what do you think when you see this image? Alright. And you'll be able to uh, have a look at this. So that's the image. What's the first thing that comes to mind? A dog that's a bat. <laughs> but it's not a bat, it's a dog, but it looks like a bat. Bat dog. Bat dog. <laughs> like the show Cat Dog. Do you remember that? Is that still on? Cat dog. Alone in the world, it's not a cat dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh, that's funny. I haven't seen that show in a long mm, time. That was good. That was really we good. We should bring that back. Did everyone just see the dog? That was I think they did. Hang on, let me see in the chat. You guys could see that, couldn't you? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Ryan could see it. So, <laughs> yep, so could Jamie. Alright. I think we've got a couple more pictures on the way that we've got to chuck on. But in the meantime, tell us about what you were doing with Tiesto when you were travelling or when you were playing. Mm. Was, where did you go when you were playing? When you were up? Uh... Um, we started off in Korea, South yeah. Korea, so in Seoul, which was amazing, and then we went to Manila and Jakarta and uh, Kuala Lumpur at Ooh. the end. So it was like bang, 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 like really like like only we only spent like a day or two in each country with a little bit of time um, in Kuala Lumpur and Korea, the start and finish. Yeah. Um, and so it's pretty much you know like lots of like you wake up, you know have some breakfast together or maybe lunch considering yeah. we we're all probably hungover then we'd you know do a bit of touristy stuff get our music ready get ready and go to the show and then you know the show would finish at two then we'd have some drinks go to the after party mm. get drunk and then you know get home late and then um do it all again but it was amazing like the the quality of the sound systems that we were working on was just as you can imagine it was perfect and the pyrotechnics, I think it's called. Um, that there were the uh, fireworks and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, like that was insane. And, you know, the hotels are really nice and we got to fly in like a jet plane, oh, which was cool. That would have been a killer experience. Oh, seriously, I was How like, old were you when you did that? Was that? I was, was 21. That recent? Oh, was it, it was oh. only like four months ago. Oh, really? Yeah, so, you so it was recent. It. Yeah. Actually, I was about to say, going to America, you have to be 21, don't you, to do all well, the Yeah, I tried to do Holy Ship last year, but um, my birthday's in March, so... I and all these ships in January, so I was still only twenty. Yeah. And I couldn't go. Like heaps of my friends went, and it was just you know. Just crap. the age, yeah. But this time you killed it. Yeah, this seriously, time. I did. I worked it well. What was Holy Ship like? Holy Ship was amazing. You need to go. It was actually the most incredible yeah. experience. So everyone should go. I think everyone should go. Yeah. All ages. Yeah. No, not all ages. Do you think they should bring one here to Australia? No. No. Keep it there. Australians would ruin it. No offense. 
but if any of you are Australian, I'm Australian. I love Australians, but <laughs> I think the vibe in America it's is different. very different. It's like really, um, you know, everyone dresses up in like crazy costumes and it's different hairstyles. Different <laughs> hairstyles. It's a really positive, like, lovey vibe. Um, which is great. I think in Australia, our culture of partying is very different to the American culture of partying, so there can be a lot more violence and stuff, which does suck, but I think, you know, it's probably best if it stays over yeah. there. There have been all these articles saying, you know, we are full of bogans. <laughs> There's been all those articles, you know, saying that they're gonna, like, hard is yeah. gonna bring holy ship here, but I don't think it'll happen. Yeah, I think it'll be unlikely. I think if you want to go there to witness and to enjoy it, you've just got to make the trip yeah, over there. I think it. that's part of the fun, going the journey. Yeah. Making it all the way there, partying. It's a long way to get there, though, especially from Sydney. How many hours? Is it? Well, it's like, what, 13 to LA, and then, and then another 5 or 6 to Miami. And that's not even including stopovers or anything like that. So yeah, it is a bit. It's a bit of an effort, but yeah, totally. Once you get there, it. it'll be worth it. The buffet was just awesome. Oh my <laughs> god, pizza every day. <laughs> Sounds like holy buffet. I don't want to name it. Seriously, I like I. I think I'm gonna propose to the guys that run it that next year we should just have like a recovery day at the end <laughs> where we can all just sleep and just eat and eat and sleep. Because, you know, eat, we got sleep, off at Miami. Eat, sleep, repeat. Eat, sleep, eat, sleep. <laughs> no, eat, sleep, rave, repeat for four days and then eat, sleep for four days. That's it. Yeah. Because we got off the boat at Miami and we literally just, I slept for two days yeah. almost straight. Just getting up to eat and shower and, you know, it was it was a good long recovery. But it would have yeah. been cool if it was on the boat. Mm. <laughs> Alright, we got a couple of photos. So this one's an interesting one. Hopefully everyone can see this. We're going to put it on air. First thing that comes to mind when you see this. It's really cool. I want it to be a boat. My boat. What do you the think? first thing that comes to mind, I'm going to own a boat like that when I grow up. So hopefully everyone can see the uh, the duck we've Is got. that in Sydney? That is huge. That is... Wow, I don't know. imagine driving that thing. That'd be so fun. Yeah, that's... Quack, uh, quack. I don't think that could bring that on, holy shit. What do you reckon? We'll tag it on the end. That would be amazing. You know what? I think it's in... Miami, they have like a massive inflatables festival. Does anyone know what it's called? Where they have those massive inflatable art pieces in the sky and they all pull them along the beach. Mm -hmm. I know, it's some famous parade. Yeah. It'd be cool if Holy Ship had them like floating like off the back. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Alright, so we've got one more question, or oh, one more picture, sorry. What's this one? This will be an interesting one. What? <laughs> 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 oh my god, that's insane. That's what came to mind. That sound that came out of my mouth. Is he throwing it or is it coming to What is it, a water balloon or something? It's a water bomb. That's scary. <gasps> Do you remember having water bomb fights when you were young? Still have them. Do you? No, not really. But I want to. <laughs> <laughs> we should have one. I think we need to organise one. Video. Who wants to see a water bomb fight? Done. And I'll bleach your hair at the same time. Oh gosh. <laughs> this isn't going to be a good day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Alright, let's have a look. What else we got here? I'll remove that. Alright, we got Lewis. Lewis wants to jump on. So Lewis, we're going to come say... Here we go. We're going to put you on screen, Lewis. So hang in there. In the meantime, I think we're going to get a few photos up. Then we're going to be wrapping it up Hello. soon, guys. Hey! Hello. I sorry for my English, I'm Spanish. Your English is amazing. No, thank you. <laughs> I, well, I, I didn't know anything about you before. I'm just curious. And I have to say that um, you were talking about being and producing, and mm -hmm. I think you're amazing because no one says what you say. Yeah. All people is using this button, you know, it's. it's like fake being. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> I think the thumbs up. Thank you so much. Seriously, it is. It's great to hear positive feedback like that because you know you're right. Everyone is using all this technology, and it makes it like not even like music anymore because it's like technology. But like I come from a, I, I started playing piano when I was four and singing and guitar and everything, and so I think it's really important to actually keep it musical, like just, you know, use the technology to help you, but not let it control the music. So, yeah, keep it simple. You, you can, you, I mean, you can find that of these things, but you have to feel your thing. Yeah, exactly, so, exactly. I don't see in the other. No, yeah. I completely agree. Thank you okay. so much. Um, okay, I 
wanted to ask you, yeah. do you follow any uh, um, pattern, I think, when you are doing your progression in your songs? A pattern? Ah, oh, I get you, I understand. Pattern, um, yeah, I mean. Like how I do them. So I think for me, the first thing I always try and do is come up with like the chord progression and you know from that chord progression you can create a melody and from that you can kind of like add in all the stuff like all the more you know the electronic sounds later so for me I like to sit on my piano and yeah. muck around on my piano at home trying to you know make a, yeah. make a song sounding good and then after that so first of all you know you add all the percussion so you know your kick drums and your hi-hats and everything like that and layer them up and getting them sounding fat because you know they're the base of it and then after that you add in you know the mids the highs all the other synths that you're working with to replicate the melody that you started with and then at the end of it what I usually do is just put an uh, like an intro a breakdown and a drop and then from there you kind of expand and like create the structure so create the whole song so yeah I suppose I start working with an instrument or like you know just start in my head and then you then later you take it to the um, to the program like Ableton is what I use and so and then you expand it out so that's how I do it but you know everyone does it that's differently I'm sure people have a billion different ways of doing it yeah the, the thing is that I, I, I have some melodies I have some not songs but when I try to do this, this whole thing I don't like them it's just <laughs> Big boring, I can I can do it. Yeah, definitely. Know, so it's it's so hard, and that's like why I said before, it's really good if you like have a friend or something that is better at you know <laughs> working the program that you are Learn to it. have a teacher because you know there's yeah. like I started off watching heaps of YouTube tutorials. But there's only so much you mm. can learn off YouTube, I think, and often one person on YouTube will say one thing and then another person will say another thing. So, you know, it's like... Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, the perspectives are clashing, so it's good if you can work with someone yeah. who is, um... who you're Similar. quite close to and who understands the way that you think, and then they can teach you heaps of stuff, and it it's so much quicker than typing in, you know, how do I work this synth and make this sound, you know, because then, you know, that just takes yeah. forever. So it's better if you can, you know, have a personal experience with someone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Louis. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs> okay. Am I yelling? No, no, that's good. Okay. That's all right. That's good. All right. We've got lucky last person. We've got uh, Alan. 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 <laughs> Steve. 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 <laughs> all right. Lucky last, Alan. I'm gonna put you on screen. All right. Here we go. And then we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Alan Woodman. It's a really cool sounding name. Mm. It sounds like a, a broadcaster's name, mm. Alan Woodman. Oh. Hey, there's two of you. Hey, there's two of you. Yeah, there's two. Who's that's who? Woody and I'm Alan. Is that Woody and I'm you're Alan? Alan. That's Alan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi guys. <laughs> so confused. Oh. Um, I'm Ben. Ben, not Woody. <laughs> ben, ben and Alan. I get you, Ben and Alan, sorted. Um, wanted to ask about getting your first gig as a DJ, like at a club. Yeah. Um, so my first like, gig. Start yeah. So my first gig was at. Um, do you guys know Coogee Beach in Sydney? Yeah, yeah. So my friend was running like a um, just a local DJ night there, and um, I literally just asked him like, can I play? And he was like, well, send me a mixtape, you have to be good. And I wasn't good. So I sent him this shitty mixtape. And he was like, oh, you know, I'll put you on first when no one's there. Um, and so that was, for me, was I was just lucky. Like, I knew someone who worked in the club. Um, but even so, I stuffed up my set. I stopped the music four times. Um, and I played, like, bangers at about 8 p.m. to, like, a pub full of mums and dads eating their dinner. It was so embarrassing. My parents came and watched me, um, but <laughs> they, they did ask me back, which I was so surprised about. But um, I think for me, in regards to getting gigs, at the start, I struggled. Like, I, you know, played a couple of times at Coogee, and I think I played 
at another pub in the city, but it was very hard starting out getting gigs. You know, I'd send some mixtapes out to clubs. The best thing for me was doing networking. So at Your Shot, um, that just opened up so many doors. So I can recommend like that so, so highly yeah. if you can somehow get into that. Apart from that... Yeah, we registered last yeah. night. Oh, oh high five! <laughs> Um, yeah, can't wait. <laughs> awesome. Apart from that, I think it's just about, you know, being present in the club scene and actually talking to the promoters and the DJs and putting a face to your name because, you know, anyone can, I was doing it wrong, I was just sending mixtapes out, but, you know, it's good if you can, um, yeah. be, make it a personal experience so they actually want to book you, like, maybe as a friend or a, an associate, not just like a name on Facebook. Yeah. And then guys, I think we were speaking to... Um, one more. We were speaking to Will and Joel recently as well, and what they recommended was social media is really big right now. Yeah. So sharing it as much as possible. Yeah. And I think we've seen that as well, like what we're doing right now, and just get it out there as much as possible. If you can get your yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter together and start getting some people to follow you, that's so, so handy. Like, it can get you so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just wondering, Germany Club's coming out. Do you want or um, yeah, so I've been working um, with Dem Slackers on some more kind of tracks at the moment, which is really exciting, as well as some other people that I, I can't say at the moment. It's all under wraps, but um, yeah, my like Faith with Faith with Two Less came out yesterday for pre-order on iTunes, so that's like the the next big one. But um, yeah, there's a couple more in the works, which is very exciting. I can't wait, but um. I, I, yeah, I can't say anything yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure she'll chuck it up on her Facebook page as well. Yes. I mean, that'll be the first point of call, I think. Yeah, exactly. Are you coming to the Gold Coast soon? Yeah, I'm playing at Platinum. Oh. I don't know if I was meant to say that. Okay. I'm, I'm coming to the Gold Coast soon. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Platinum. <laughs> I'm right. playing at the Gold Coast soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alright guys, Mwah. we'll catch you soon, Alan and Woody, Woody and Alan, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're going to wrap it up here guys. Thank awesome. you for tuning in. We had Thank a you. lot of people on and off here and it's been awesome having them on. Thank you so much for tuning in guys. I want to do this every week. Hopefully you had can some we? fun with it. We can I do did. it. We can do it. We'll lock it in. And that way we can catch up with all you guys really soon. Awesome. So hashtag faith. I think we also had another challenge as well, which was... The, the song, love song, dedication. Oh yeah. So don't forget about that. Someone can write me a love song, I'll put up the song that I sung on you uh, on my SoundCloud. There you go. Hashtag Beautiful. love song, hashtag faith, hashtag Megal. sorry not sorry. That's it. Beautiful. Hashtag Megal. Yeah, hashtag Megal. Hashtag Megal. Thank you so much guys. See you later guys. Mwah. Bye.